All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Kerbal Rotor Expansion, which is being made by forum user Eskandar. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a lovely new selection of rotor wing parts to allow you to build a wide variety of different helicopters, and who wouldn't want that? So let's just jump right on into the space plane hangar and have a look at the currently six different parts added in by this mod, which I should point out right off the bat here, this is very much a work in progress as it is a very, very new mod. As of the time of recording this video, it literally came out two hours ago. I was randomly browsing the forum, saw it, was impressed by it, and just thought, well, I think I found tonight's video. So here we are. So let us grab a PPD-12 cupola module for size comparison. I don't know why I'm grabbing this one since we're going to make a helicopter, but eh... Eh, I like it. Let's do it. Now, we could just go down to the engine tab, and the six rotor wing parts are quite easy to find. But in the search bar, you can also type in the manufacturer name, which is Eskandar, and you will see our six different rotary engines, which are all lovely. Now, you may remember that a few weeks ago, we had a look at a helicopter part, and I crashed and burned horribly. These engines? I've actually been able to fly, guys. And I think I know why. We'll talk about it momentarily here. But the first engine we're going to have a look at is the KH-22 Osprey main rotor. And I'm going to point out right off the bat here, it has a twin engine, the Osprey main rotor reverse, or the KH-22R, as these are meant to work in conjunction with one another, as they would on the actual Osprey aircraft. You have one engine on one wing and the other engine on the other wing, and that's how it balances out everything and allows you to fly, and it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. So it is a double up on the engines here, though uh, they work quite well, and technically you could use them individually, it'll just be a lot more difficult. Difficult. Now, we also have the same deal with the Sparrow engine down here, but we'll get to that one in a moment. So let's talk about the Osprey engine. Now, of course, each of these has identical specs to them, and the fact that they produce four electric charge per second on the alternator, they have a max thrust of 277 kilonewtons, an engine ISP of 10,000, and consume liquid fuel at a rate of 0.428 per second max and require air intake of 6.424 per second max and also have on them a reaction wheel and here here is where i think these engines are so much or why they are so much better than other rotor aircraft parts i've played with in the past the reaction wheel they have as you can see here pitch torque of 50 yaw torque of 50 but roll torque of only eight. One of my biggest problems whenever I try and fly helicopters in this game is I always have a tendency to roll the damn things over. But this, this makes it a lot more difficult. It has that pitch and it has that yaw, which are very, very important for a helicopter, but it limits your roll capacity with the torque of the reaction wheel here. And that, that actually seems to make it, at least for me, a heck of a lot more controllable. I don't know, you better pilots out there may have alternate views, but I actually really like that different rates ratio. Most of the time when you see reaction wheel parts, it's the same number all the way down. But I like that it's a 50-58 ratio, and uh, it works quite well for me. But that is the Osprey engine. Now we'll take a look at the Sparrow next, as it is, of course, the other dual-use engine that has the Sparrow, the KH-7, and the KH-7R, which is for the reverse. Now this one is a lot smaller than the Osprey, if we uh, just kind of look at them side by side there. As you can see, a much uh, daintier sort of rotor wing blade, and of course with it a lot less power. Now it still produces four electric charge per second, but its thrust is only 151 kilonewtons, still has that 10,000 engine ISP, and consumes fuel at point. 235 per second max, and air intake of 3.518 per second max, and again, the same reaction wheel with the 50-58 ratio works very, very nicely, allows for good, good control of these in flight. Now, the next engine we'll have a look at, we actually, we need to zoom out for this one, and that is the KH-24 Seagull main rotor. 
This baby's big. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. I mean, this was the sparrow. This was the sparrow. The length of just one of the blades of this is the entire length of the sparrow. And similarly with the Osprey. This thing just dwarfs all the rest of the engines on here, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Very well modeled and textured, just like all the other engines here. And now as for this one, stats, similar alternator at 4 per second. But this thing, oh boy, it has a max thrust of 857 kilonewtons at an engine ISP, still of 10,000, but consumes a heck of a lot more liquid fuel at 1.326 per second max and requires 19.884 air intake per second max. Now this one's reaction wheel's a little bit different. It's uh, instead of the 50-58 ratio, we have 125 on the pitch and the yaw, and 100 on the roll. And yeah, so it still has a differing ratios there, but very nice overall, and still a lot lower on the roll. And uh, yes, a very very lovely engine, though freaking massive. Now the last one we have is my personal favorite. I love flying around with this thing. It is by far, I think, the easiest to control of all of these engines, and that's the KH-50 Heron main rotor. Now this one's also quite unique as it has both of its rotors built into it right there. I really do like that. It's quite a cool little engine, and its stats are again the usual alternator of four per second, has a max thrust of only 171 kilonewtons, 10,000 engine ISP, liquid fuel it consumes at point. 265 per second max, 3.977 on air intake per second max. The reaction wheel, the pitch and yaw are 100, and the roll torque is at 16. So again, it has a good ratio. It allows you to pitch and yaw really easily, but not roll. And I think this is why I can actually fly these things and, you know, do it without crashing horribly. Horrible, horrible crashing. But yes, that is the six different engines. They are all absolutely gorgeous pieces of kit. And let's take a look at them in uh, in action with a crazy contraption that I built earlier to show off all of the engines. Oh god, look at this thing. <laughs> I spent way too much time building this for just a simple demonstration, but let's go out to the runway and show you each of these engines in series. Now, they are all quite nice, and as you can see, God, dear God, that heron just, or not the heron, the uh, seagull. Look at the size of that thing. That's, uh, I could have gone with a much smaller rig if it wasn't for that. But let's take a look first at the Osprey engines, so we will activate both of these. So you can see them spinning. And now, of course, since I have them on uh, opposite sides like that, they are spinning in basically the same direction visually, but of course, they're technically going opposite directions, which is quite good. And as you can see, they have a uh, good sound to them, good animation, though. <laughs> oh, that's qu not quite centered there. Hopefully that will get fixed in a future update. Again, remember, work in progress. But quite a nice little engine there. Let's actually deactivate them again. Ooh, kind of broke things a little. There we go. And I'm going to start them back up and be quiet so you can properly hear these engines actually starting up because they've got some pretty good sound design to them. So let's just right-click on you, activate engine, and I'll be quiet. So see, there you go. Quite a nice sound to them. You got the nice sort of uh, typical helicopter noise, and as it spins up faster and faster to its uh, final speed, you just get that very nice uh, sort of, well, engine-y sound. I really don't know how else to describe it, but it works quite well and sounds rather beautiful. Now, those are the Ospreys. Let's go over to the uh, Sparrow ones here on the other side, of course, since they are the sort of uh, dual rotor systems here. Lovely. Now, they have exactly the same sounds, of course, exactly the same animation, though these animations look far better centered. They're not kind of wobbling around like the Osprey one was. And yeah, there you go. We have the lovely Sparrow engines there doing quite nicely. So let us just shut these babies down. Oh, no, God, no, no. Don't want to activate that one quite yet. There we are, and now let's just activate for ourselves the Heron engine, which again is my personal favorite. I just I just love this thing overall. It's quite a cool little uh, 
cool little turbine, or, well, not turbine, I guess, the rotor wing engine. But there we go. So you have the two different blades spinning in opposite directions of themselves, which is quite nice. Good spinning animation. It looks like that one's quite nicely centered, though that part seemed to have uh, glitched out briefly. Interesting. But yes, yeah, very nicely done. Very well made. I do enjoy it. Let's shut that one down and finally go to the seagull. There we are. And look at that monster go. It's just so... Oh, God. Oh, God. I didn't take this into account. Oh, wait. Hold on. <laughs> Turn on the other engine to counteract it. Oh, Lord. This was a bad plan. Well, it hasn't exploded yet, so there's the seagull spinning and cutting the grass. <laughs> oh, I didn't think that part through. I should have kept that engine on. But a beautiful engine. Let's actually go and uh, revert to the space plane hangar where I actually built a helicopter earlier to show you how you can actually use these in practice and actually fly it, preferably without cutting the lawn. So I made this little Heron helicopter earlier, and it's just a its a pretty simple little helicopter, not a whole lot to it. And I, I literally built this myself in about five minutes, and with this Heron engine, it flies pretty darn well. I was able to fly all around the Kerbal Space Center for a little while, before I did finally crash into the vehicle assembly building because I was trying to land on the roof, it did not go as I had hoped. But let's actually go and take this baby off. So we have our beautiful, beautiful little helicopter here spinning up, getting ready to fly. And let's actually pull back a little bit because we are kind of moving forward. There we go. Beautiful. And if we throttle up a bit more, we should. There we are. We're, we've taken off. We've taken off. <laughs> oh, and I, I I, really do love this helicopter thing. It's just so much fun. This Heron engine is very maneuverable, very easy to control, even for someone as horrible at flying as I am. And it's just... It's just a joy to fly around with. I've really enjoyed my time with this helicopter. I've played around with a lot of different helicopter part mods in this game. And this is the first of them that I've actually been able to use quite successfully and that just makes it all the more special in my mind they're well designed engines they're absolutely beautiful in how they look how they're animated the sound design is good the controls are great all in all just a very good successful mod and if you would like to try this out for yourself and I definitely would suggest that you do go and take a look at the link in the description as always and uh, yeah definitely go and give it a try have some some fun and oh god we're gonna crash because I tried to do tricks oh lord all right hey I recovered <laughs> uh, see this is why I shouldn't try to show off piloting skills in this video in these videos because well I have no piloting skills but there we go I recovered with this lovely Heron engine and we are still flying around with a beautiful helicopter. So definitely go try this mod out for yourself. Have some fun. If you make any really cool helicopters with it, I would love to see them. So tweet me or Facebook me a picture of them. That'd be quite cool to see. And yeah, go enjoy yourself. And of course, I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one. Now I'm going to fly around for a while because I just... I enjoy this. Since I can actually fly it, I enjoy it. <laughs> Alright, later folks.